Name parameters are used when you want to call a function, but you don't want to specify the parameters in the order that you define them as. Let's see an example. We have a print deals function that takes a name, address, and an age. And normally when you were to call this function, you would need to have the string name, string address, and then the int age. And it would let you call it in that order. But if you were to put the age first and put a comma, then it'll give you a syntax error because it's not sure what the order is. So instead of doing that, what you can do instead is you can specify the parameter name. So in this case, the parameter name is called age, followed by a colon, and then the value you want to insert inside, just like that. And it doesn't matter about the order. Named parameters are normally used when you want to improve readability, when sometimes the parameter names don't make sense. In this case, you have age, address, and name, and it's pretty straightforward. Say you had something like save file, bool override file, and you just had the function define inside here. So when we go to use it in code, when we hit the brackets, we can actually see the parameter name says override file. And that's fine when we can actually see it and call it for the first time. And let's say we do want to override the file. But when you look back at that, or another developer looks back at that if you're working in a team, it just says save file true. And to me, that would mean, does true mean that it will save the file? And false means it won't save the file? That's slightly confusing. What you can do instead is you could say override file and then you could define true. So now when you see that, you say you want to save the file and you do indeed want to override it because it's true. And in other cases, you might have a function here that has override as false. But you can see very easily that these two are distinguished by the fact that I've specified the parameter and you can read it and it makes sense. When you're first calling the function, I will agree that it makes no sense for the name parameters just because you can read what the parameter is called. But for future readability and maintainability of code, which is very important when you're working on projects, on your own or within an organization, it's very key to have readable code. So having a parameter like this, which doesn't make much sense, is very difficult to work with, but this is easy. Even if you've named the parameter accordingly, as we have in this case, it might be hard to understand for people in the future. So let's just have a quick recap. If you have a function defined like this, you can specify a string name, string address, and int age. If you specify the name of the parameter, followed by a colon, it'll give you the opportunity to enter the value straight into there, and the order of parameters in the original function doesn't exactly matter. In the case of print details, it doesn't matter because name, address, and age are quite apparent to what they mean. A true or false value is very misconceiving because you don't actually know if that true or false means something else. In the case of save file, this parameter could be anything. True or false could mean anything to a save file. There could be lots of different properties inside this function that this true applies to. In the case of what we're using it for, it's actually overriding the file. So this could be a very delicate situation where you're saving a file and there's certain situations where you do want to override the file and there's some where you don't. And if you see this code, you might not know that true actually means to override the file. So having the parameter there in a named form with a colon lets the developer know that he is indeed specifying a value to override the file. And like I said previously, this is mainly for big projects or even just looking back at your code after several weeks of not developing. This can be very helpful and it will avoid you looking back at code quite often so you can stop worrying less about reading code and worry more about writing code. This video was made possible by my awesome Patreons DP Unique and Tominator. Thank you for your continued support. I have a C-Sharp Masterclass Udemy course coming up soon, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and join the Discord server for exclusive discounts and promotions.